it's always been my dream to be an astronaut. I can do it. I want to enroll to be an astronaut. I can do this. So I can eat peaches and Tian Gong like the Monkey King. And you know, some of these rides are comparable to the training one would need to become an astronaut. But, but man, look, they're, they're so high. Oh, God. I have passed the test. Can I be an astronaut? In May 2018, China announced the formal opening of its space station to international collaboration and warmly invited the world to actively take advantage of its space station and conduct experiments. On June 12, 2019, nine projects from 17 countries were chosen as the first batch of projects of scientific experiments at the Chinese space station. Exploring the boundless universe is a shared dream of mankind. Some foreign experts exclaim that being part of China's space programs is like boarding an express train. But instead of sitting down after boarding, one must move along and catch up. It's uh, an attitude with your partner that you have to be ready to work together because you get more interest, you get an industry. So uh, international cooperation has already become very important factor in this kind of future human missions to, uh, to the moon. This year is the 50 years anniversary of the Apollo 11 mission. Uh, also, we noticed that NASA has planned to go back to the moon uh, with a program called uh, Artemis. Because you know that this is not a uh, period like the moon race that uh, decision makers can, can invest so much money on these kind of space programs. The international cooperation can reduce the cost of each partner countries. And I think that in uh, cooperation with China, we have a very good experience and it's simply that we have to continue developing. <laughs> this has always been my dream. Trained to be an astronaut. <sighs> okay. All right, cool. Boom. This is Now, becoming an astronaut takes years of physical and mental training in order to achieve a level of otherworldly omnipotence that is unmatched by any other human endeavor. Having done this, I've just gotten a, a glimpse of one little facet of what it takes to be an astronaut and to see if I got the right stuff, as they say. Check it out. China Aerospace started from scratch, and by 2019, the country is ushering in a phase of super space programs. The Chang'e 4 lunar probe was successfully launched. The Beidou Navigation Satellite System began providing global services, and the Long March rockets have been launched over 300 times. The emergence of each set of data proves that China, once trailing behind in the global space programs, has now earned its place in the Global Space Program competition and is tapping into a new field. By December 31, 2018, 114 space launches took place globally. Among them, China and the U.S. respectively launched 39 and 31 rockets. The last time that over 100 rockets were launched in a year globally was 1990. Back then, China launched fewer than five rockets a year. 28 years later, China alone accounts for over one-third of the world's rocket launches. Today, the Chinese strive to achieve the final goal of the Lunar Exploration Program as they ride the wave of victory. They're working diligently to promote global space programs. 
They're spurring the building of a community with a shared future for mankind for global peace through space as they contribute more Chinese wisdom, plans, and strength. To uh, develop this kind of uh, manned lunar missions in the future. And we've already started some uh, preparation of the key technologies. We've already uh, started the development of the 500 ton rocket engines, which is very necessary for the uh, building the huge rocket like the Saturn V used by the United States before. Uh, so this is a very uh, important provision for the future. The energy is a problem. If we can get oxygen and hydrogen from the regulate, and then we can refuel exactly. a rocket, that will change totally the way uh, we approach. Then uh, also, the gateway, which is kind of exporting the space station to the moon. We also have already studied the design of the second generation spaceship, which is also a very necessary part of the future's potential uh, manned lunar missions. But still, we have to solve many problems. I think uh, China is doing a big effort. <laughs> God! The cost of exploring space is astronomical. And who knows how much it would cost to buy a ticket to the space station if it were open to the public. I don't know, you need a bottomless pit of money. I don't know why China, like the rest of the world, would persist on investing in such a costly endeavor. Because we need it. We need infrastructure in space. Like we need it infrastructure, we need roads or railways. We can have the remote sensing satellites. We can have very precise and very beautiful images. These images can be used in our daily lives, such as the Google map or the Baidu map. Uh, we have the communication satellites, the satellite television. These are very direct returns in our daily life. Maybe many of these space pro programs cannot have direct returns, but these can do uh, benefit the whole world, benefit the human being, and benefit our daily life. China is uh, an economic power, is a big country with a great uh, big population. So you need uh, this infrastructure in space for sustainability of development. Manned lunar exploration, Mars exploration, and the Beidou navigation satellite system. China Aerospace has a lot more to offer. On June 25, 2019, with the 46th Beidou Navigation Satellite System's successful launch, the system's coverage and performance have been further improved, and its positional accuracy has gone from 10 meters to 6 meters. Satellite navigation systems are key spatial infrastructure. They provide human society with around-the-clock accurate temporal and spatial information and key information that supports socioeconomic development. We needed our own system to uh, develop our industry. You need your own system to be sure that you can uh, develop uh, safely your economy. GPS or the GLONASS system only use one type of orbit, but we China use three types of orbit. It can provide very accurate services to the whole world. For any satellite navigation system, the feature is that the more satellites you have, the accuracy will be better. And also, it will be convenient for the customers to get its position more faster. China will continue its con construction of the uh, beta navigation system. For the third generation, it already become a global system, which means that it, it already has the ability to provide services to customers all over the world. China Aerospace has undergone a tremendous change as developed, and that is the use of spatial resources to develop the national economy. According to statistics, among over 1,100 new materials in China, over 80% are created with the help of aerospace technology. Over 2,000 aerospace technological achievements are applied to different fields of the national economy. Satellite communication and navigation, 
weather forecast, disaster prevention and reduction, and food production, etc., all of which are closely connected to aerospace science and technology. I think all this development will be to satisfy market, to consumers' needs. And the consumer needs is, are things that they need for the normal daily life. And uh, agriculture, all this development will need space. So in the future, for instance, uh, making some medicine needs very quiet and a very special environment which can only be realized in space. So the gene of the seeds will be changed very fast and uh, more remarkably than that on the ground. Maybe uh, they are more delicious or they have more protection amount. I think this is, uh, is the future for new space. And, uh, and China, I think, is uh, very well prepared for this new space. These seeds have just come back from the space station. Chinese scientists are trying to share more futuristic space technology with people. I think it's better than any fairy tale because the more you share, the more you reap. Get it? Reap? Seeds? Eh? In the aerospace field, sharing has never been easy. In 1994, China applied to join the U.S.-led International Space Station program, but was rejected on the ground of prevention of the spread of spatial technology. Later, the U.S. introduced the law that bans any satellites containing American parts from being launched by China. Since 2011, after Tiangong One's successful docking, the U.S. has completely forbidden communication in the aerospace field between the two countries. However, China's progress in the aerospace field didn't stagnate. The International Space Station will retire in 2024, and the Chinese Space Station has a design life of 10 years. Once it begins formal operation in 2022, it may be the only orbiting space experiment station after 2024, and China isn't turning anyone away. The best way to do that is actually through cooperation. We have to share the problems we had in the, in the past, and we have to also share the new vision and the new point of view that China brings to the world of space. The Chinese Space Station opens a new area of cooperation uh, for, for Europe. Chinese uh, astronauts, Mr. Ye Guangfu, has already been trained in Europe. Uh, the European astronauts uh, been trained in China in the rescue training. In the future, it is very, very possible for the European astronauts to uh, visit China's future space station. Uh, and also we noticed that the the ATV uh, developed by Europe uh, provides a uh, cargo resupply service to the International Space Station. In the future, it can be extended. Every country, every space capable nation are focusing on Mars. So next year will be a very important year, either for China and for Europe. Uh, both of us will have the plan to launch some uh, Mars probes. Mars is a very difficult place to get in there. And uh, they, in history, there are many failures of different agencies. Uh, we should explore possibilities.